Hey everybody, welcome to the Merlin the Mighty podcast. I've got a new co-host with me. You guys might recognize him. This is Tiefling. Hi. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I'm trying to like kind of get things started, doing some a new format for things to be like semi-organized or whatever. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to kind of start off by like going through some sites and looking for articles on different news things and reacting, see if we've got anything interesting to say, and then... I've got a couple other topics, and then whatever else we talk about is... Whatever else whatever, we talk about. What, whatever else we talk about. Like, before the we started hearing, we talked about Star Trek 2 edited without con edit. Uh, it sell millions. Thank you very much. I think... Right. Be, well, I mean, I know that the... Meme of the century. Meme of the century? Meme of the century. I feel like the movie would be like a half an hour. And? <laughs> what do you want from me? I know, I'd, like, I'd like to see it, uh, for sure. There's, there's definitely the potential for that kind of edit for every Star, uh, Star Trek movie. Mm-hmm. Well, Star Wars, I mean, the, what is it, the Phantom edit, where Jar Jar is like a wise guy, like a wise old sage dude? <laughs> I've never seen that. I always wanted to track it down, but many people have like touched that one up, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you know, a lot of anime stuff, so I, I'm not like super up on things. Tiefling keeps up a little bit more. But, uh, you know, sometimes I've we'll been falling up. behind with current stuff. Yeah, me honestly. too. Just just because of time. No, I mean, honestly. I, it's life, man, busy. So, really, <laughs> really, it's just kind of like whatever you see, like, who knows? We might get an interesting reaction. Mm-hmm. But, uh, all right, I'm on Anime News Network now. Something uh, that I did hear recently that's not, like, 100%. Um, ReZero is getting an OVA. Is it going to be a continuation to the... Oh, uh, it's before they do a season... I guess it would be a season three. Okay. Because I guess if you can go seasons by openings. But uh, it's before they do like a, a season two kind of kind of deal. It's... Uh, I don't know 100% of the details on it. I've just, I just seen some sites cover it. It's supposed okay. to be... Uh, kind of back when he was in the mansion, mm-hmm. like more stuff that happened, like while he was in there. Well, like it was supposed to have been. He was supposed to have spent a lot more time than we originally thought at the mansion. Well, it's kind of funny because if I remember correctly, uh, that was actually my favorite arc when I watched the show. Like the stuff that happened in the mansion because he got stuck there and died a lot. Yeah, and it was all to find out uh, what was her name, the the best girl. Yeah, Rem. Like to find out what was going on with her and to help kind of reach out to her and like. That's when the show got really brutal and dark. Because before that, it was kind of like, oh, it's kind of like a real life video game. But when it got to the mansion, I remember being really interested. I think post mansion, post his freak out was the best. Like when he got his shit together. Mm-hmm. After Rem helped him get his shit together, was my favorite, definitely my favorite part of the show. Um, but yeah, the mansion's definitely up there. Well, I remember when I watched past the mansion point, I still thought the show got good, but I, I guess it's because it was condensed. So I felt like they were rushing to a lot of things. Like, oh, yeah. here's this thing, and there's this monster thing. Like, there well, was scary they, parts, they, they, but they jumping. It, it wasn't... It's a light novel. Yeah. And adaptations of light novels vary depending on who's doing the adaptation. hmm But I personally think this is, like, one of my favorite stories that for, for like, the past couple of years. I know you really... When you recommended it to me, you said that it was, like, one of your favorite anime recently. Yeah. With the, definitely within the past two three years. And uh, oh, and there was another thing uh, I heard found out about recently uh, was that apparently Roni Kenshin's getting more manga chapters, yes. like a new arc. How do you feel about that? Uh, I would have liked if it was um, Yaku no, Yakiko uh, no Sabakpo, the idea that he pitched at the end of it, which it was a couple years later, and Kenshin's son thought he deserved the sword, but Kenshin had already passed the sword on to Yakiko, and it would have been like a Kind of like a struggle for who kind of really receives the torch as he's passing it on, kind of. Basically, who understands what uh, Kenshin was really teaching more, because his son kind of felt more selfish about it. Like I'm his blood relative, I deserve this. Mm-hmm. Whereas Yakiko yeah, would be more like, I seen him when he was doing this. I learned from him. I understand what he truly meant. He gave this to me as like a reminder to like bring peace to those that you can kind of reach out and touch. Mm-hmm. I mean, <clears throat> I remember they did a, they did like a, a one-off kind of like 30-page... A little while ago. Uh, yeah, a, a good little while ago, like chapter of him 
out doing stuff, and it was actually really good. Because people have been calling a, a lot of discussion that comes up online that I've noticed is like, okay, you know, can we, would Rurouni Kenshin ever deserve a remake of some kind in anime form? And I don't know. I mean, the manga everybody kind of is, says is beloved. I thought it wrapped up pretty well. Like, it's one of those things, does it really need a continuation, or is it just another example of them milking it, you think? I think that there are more stories that they could tell. Okay. I think that if it got a continuation, it should be about a different character. Mm -hmm. Because the way that the last arc wrapped up, even his scar started to disappear. He, mm -hmm. he settled. He passed the torch. His story is kind of done. It really is. It concluded. Yes. You know, it took a while. And then, which is why the youngest character picks up the torch and continues on. Mm -hmm. He can still be a part of the story, but he's not the main focus because he said what he's needed to say. No, I mean, it really makes sense. It's just kind of a logical progression. And I think that just means one thing that one reason why Kenshin is such a beloved manga is because it had a solid ending like that. It had a good ending, which a lot of shonen-esque battle type things don't have. Mm -hmm. Which brings up a, a topic that we were planning on talking about. That's true. What makes a good shonen? That's true, and we're probably going to wrap up the podcast with that because I recently started watching another series which kind of brought up comparisons, so we will definitely get to that. But And that is something that I'm curious to see where it will go. Mm -hmm. But you're, I think it would make more sense to follow another character because you're right, Kenjin's story is pretty much resolved. They even w they went to the ba the background of his defining characteristic that he mastered his style. He chose to find a he has he found a home now. Like what's left for him to do other than protect his home mm -hmm. with a style that he can't use anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Good ten Mitsuruki style. <laughs> oh my god! When I was watching the the movies, they they translated Hitokiri mm -hmm. to. Kill sword, kill sword, <laughs> because that's what it is. So the subtitles were all, always called him the kill sword Batosai. The kill sword Batosai. <laughs> so I was like, I was hearing what I, what I was meaning to hear, Hitokiri, but I was seeing the kill sword. So I'm like, it's so cringe. I love those those <laughs> translations. Though. Those 100 percent exact translations. He is. Kill sword, like how nice can you get? He is Batosai the Kill Sword. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. It sounds like a Rob Liefeld character. I, I, I checked out that out. Yeah. And before we move on to these reactions, you just reminded me of something else you told me. Apparently, in the Pokemon series, Brock and Misty came back. Brock and Misty came back for two half an hour specials. Cool. He went back to Professor Oak's lab. He met Bulbasaur, his thirty Tauros. Bulbasaur. And you, uh. What do you tell me? He's what? He's only fourteen. Yeah, he's twelve. He's twelve. He's still twelve after like twenty years. Yeah, he should be like twenty two, twenty three. Yeah, you know, people. You know, I don't want to get too off here, but when people complain about certain series, like long running shonen ones, not having development, look at something like Pokemon, where it's just like, wow. Like, I think if you compare anything that people are spending <laughs> that they d the characters don't grow, you can just point to Pokemon and say, no, the characters have changed a little bit. They've uh, gone through some stuff. I mean, they definitely stretch it out, but, I mean, there is something. Like, if you want to talk mm -hmm. about no growth, Pokemon's one, but it's cool Brock and Misty came back, I guess. You know? Yeah, and they just revealed that even though he's still super young, and all of those adventures took a good ten years to put out on the show, it was still enough time for him to only have two birthdays. Well, you know what? That is just an idea that shows that it's never going to end. That's great marketing right there. That's a good business platform. Yeah, they're always going to going to appeal to their target audience because the main character can never grow. That's true. But it's actually different from what they did in the games because recently with the Sun and Moon game, uh -huh. they brought the original character from the main game. He's a character that shows up in the game. He's 22, 23, and an adult. He's been champion of the, the Kanto region for a while. Mm -hmm. He's traveling, hanging out, having a good time with his best friends. Hmm. He's, he's, he was allowed to grow. The character I'm referring to is Red. Red. Oh, yeah, Red. And mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, he kind of had his own little OVA special, which I'm kind of surprised wasn't like a real thing. Like, I thought when you told me about that, that was going to be a full show, and that would be cool. I yeah. hoped it would have been a full show. But, but they still have Ash Ketchum's show still going. I mean... I mean, I'm just I'm surprised it's because they found a mar they they found a marketable formula. The the young kid 
does the thing to beat the bad guy. But what about reruns? Like, do we really need like hundreds and hundreds of new episodes? This the, oh my god, there. Are, the, the, no. What, what do you mean reruns? <laughs> Fuck the old stuff. The, hey, never. Hey, hey, it's not hey, on TV anymore. Hey, original 150, man. You know that's you know. I, I guess you got to market the um, toys. There and are but. 800 and. Fifty some, I think. Man, I'm. You know, you're falling behind. I have been behind with that. You're like, behind I, the for, curve, good sir. You no, know, like Togepi was it for me. And like, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is this thing? But anyway, look, Infernape is the best. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what I'm talking. I, about. I have no idea what he's talking about. Like, I, I will admit that I was always more of a Digimon guy, which still is an excuse because I didn't watch all the shows, but. That's a whole other discussion. Did you want so is the thing that's going on? Yeah, they have new seasons. Uh, all right. Currently, what they're doing right now is Digimon Adventure Try, which is they have the original characters oh, no. back in like half an hour, forty-five minute OVA esque kind of things. What it seems to be doing is trying its hardest to explain why the the after credits like ending thing was what actually happened to because the characters. Because people were so mad about people it. People were. So I'm still mad about it, but like, what they're doing is like, I don't want to spoil it for you. No, it's fine. No, I, I caught a little bit of it, and I thought it was really cool. It I seems like what going. they're doing is they're, they're going through with the merging of the real and digital worlds, which mm-hmm. is why Ty's position as ambassador to the digital <laughs> world is actually a job. That sounds awesome, though. Yeah, but... I never really saw him as an ambassador, though. He's not. He's a giant idiot that follows his heart. Well, that's what he does. Correct me if I'm wrong. He likes soccer. He likes Agumon. <laughs> he likes Sora. That's a. It's about his character. Uh, what happened to Gary again? Uh, Gary was a musician. Oh, he was a rock star. Yeah, he was an ass to everybody. Yeah, he's an asshole. He's a giant asshole. And Joe became Joe like became Wayne. an accountant. I mean, you, know why he, you know why he became an accountant? Tell because me. he wanted to be an accountant. <laughs> and then everyone was like, but you know, I'm good at this Digimon thing too, but I don't know if it's for me. And I'm like, I'm really nervous and I want to be an accountant, but you guys, and everyone's like, nah, man, you do what you want to do because we believe in you and we're your friends. You know what? I'm okay with that though. Yep. All right. Well, he's not the most BS one, I guess. Um, well. No, I'm Ty's gonna... definitely, the, he's ambassador. To, no one would, no <laughs> one should trust him in any sort of capacity with any sort well, of power other than leading the group. Well, I mean, maybe that's what they were going for, is he was the leader of the show. He was the leader by proxy because he was the kid that held it together while everyone else freaked out. That's a good quality. Which is why leader. he... because And the only reason he held it together was because his virtue was courage and nobody else was apparently allowed to be courageous. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that all those kids were pretty courageous in that no, show. No, Ty was the most courageous. He has the crest of courage, which means he was the courageous one. <laughs> I mean, he... I, I always think that... Okay, it's not the only quality they have. They're just emphasizing this is like your main thing. Yep. Like, I mean... And then the asshole loner got friendship, which was a bull. <laughs> <laughs> I, I care about my friends. As he punches Ty in the face. I... He was the edgy, like, angry, angsty get That's bold. Now that I think about it, i got to go back and watch Digimon. I, I love that show. That was classic. But, um, all right. Let's try to react to some stuff if we see anything we know about. Because I'll be honest, I look at Anime News Network, and I'd always be like, okay, I kind of know what that is. Um, moving on. All right. All right. Like, for instance, Shelf Life. What, what is that? I don't. <laughs> Paul discusses the surprisingly wild appeal of this heartfelt Jose story about an obscure sport. But what's the sport? I don't care. <laughs> okay. Uh, Magical Circle. All about Los Angeles anime film festivals going on. Uh, America finally has its own anime film festival, which I that's think is cool. That's pretty cool. I guess it's an official one. And it's happening in Los Angeles this weekend coming up. Look, can I get an official way to watch Common Rider? Oh, that's yeah. all that I want. I li- for me to watch Common Rider, I need to go through illegal sites. There is no official s- uh, sub or dub of anything Common Rider related. You know, I, I can't watch the source material for Power Rangers <laughs> or anything Sentai related, other than I guess Crunchyroll picked up Ultraman, which was really cool. But that's uh, true. Hey, Crunchyroll, how about that Common Rider? 
You know, that's one of those things that I never really understood because I remember I've kind of always been curious about Kamen Rider because over the past couple of years, you've really been into it and you're always like... It's one of my favorite shows. You're always like, Joe, Merlin, you know, like, you know, I know you like Power Rangers and, and like the Sentai stuff, but Kamen Rider, and I, and I knew a couple people I've run into that are like, no, Kamen Rider is like, that's all I watch, like, you know, as like a gateway sometimes you get an anime and then Kamen Rider can consume your life. Yes. Like, I know you're hardcore into it, you've watched a lot of it. But every time you recommend it to me, it's always like to these weird sites, and it's like hard to get to. And I'm like, why? Why is there no licensed stuff? Like, I know it's got a fan base. It's got an enormous fan base. Do you think it's a licensing issue? Or I something? have absolutely. Maybe Saban's just like keep it out of the keep it out of the Americas so that he can make money with uh, the Power Rangers. But I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, like, I don't know why there is no official channel for me to go through to watch Kamen Rider. That's really weird. I mean, I might have to look into that. Maybe I'll, I'll post something about 100% it. hundred percent is, like, backhanded, like, left ways sites mm. that you're afraid are going to give your computer a virus it, because it, you we went, like, nine hours deep into the internet to find episode one. I know that there's kind of always, like, a little bit of a controversy discussion, uh, especially with, when it comes to watching stuff overseas, like, with a lot of anime fans, is that... You know, anime whole, has a... Ha, it's a completely different conversation because anime... There's a discussion about whether about you can pay for it and go through the correct channels. I can't do that. Yeah, it's that's, physically impossible. And, and, and that's the thing with Kamen Rider. It's like you know, if you, I'm wrong, please tell me. I'm literally begging you. <laughs> okay. No, really, yeah, that's true. Because I mean, I'd like to watch it too. And if there was that, and they could make it available, then I'm sure you'd probably buy the seasons or whatever. I'd buy everything if I could. Do you think you the DVDs that are released are in Japanese for Japanese audiences? And I don't know Japanese. I'm sorry. <laughs> as much as I try, it's not that hard for people. I've tried. Well, surely there's got to be a bootleg like sub somewhere. You could, you could sell. It's kind of semi legal. No, th that'd be illegal. Uh, yeah, I guess it would be. Like, there's no way for me to watch it. Well. What? It's big enough that at every like major anime convention that they do like the the cosplay photo shoots, there's always a time dedicated oh. to Sentai slash Kamen Rider. There's well, always people there that do it, no well, matter where you go. In fact, uh, when I went to PsychoCon a couple years ago, I went to a Kamen Rider panel where he like went over the history and showed like all his figurines and stuff. But the thing is, I guess to get a lot of that stuff, he had to physically go to Japan. Yes, <laughs> you know so. It's a little inconvenient if you're a Common Rider fan, but let us know if there's another site or it's super stressful way to purchase it. Vice and Luna conventions end, and they've got like a is that a plushy pillow with Goku? No, ass? It's, it's one of those uh, ergonomical kind of mouse pads that uh, have like the girls' tits or the ass. But it's but Goku's they, they butt, do dudes. Now for gender equality, how do those make you feel? Um, no matter who it's of, it feels really fucking creepy. <laughs> Like that's going a little too far. Uh, yeah, that's right. The mouse pads. Yeah, I did. I did see some of those once. And, mouse, uh, the mouse pads are weird. I'm. I'm. Well, so, I'm not sorry. They're weird. Yeah, that's a little creepy. Uh, okay, are, is it more? It's. I'm guessing that's less creepy than a body pillow, right? Or is that? Is it? It's or is about, it the same level. It's about the same level. Like if you walked, if you walked into my room here and you saw, like I had a. I don't know, like a Sailor Moon, uh, you know, like her mouse pad. Her, her, her tits her, her tits, butt. But it's just like, I'm like clicking. Like, like you, you, first of all, resting your hand on the, it. The lady would not allow that here. A honey lemon would not allow that. But um, if that wasn't a factor. It'd be fucking weird. Even if you knew me. What, would it? <laughs> it'd be fucking weird. <laughs> okay, well then, um, the mouse pads are weird, I guess. Um, but I, I feel like they're sold. People do They are no, 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 they're popular. Uh, um, okay. so are body pillows. Like body pillows are a thing. Well, I mean if you didn't uh, <laughs> Moving on. Um and Pokemon catch them all balls with new line of real life. Channel your any inner Pokemon master with Bandai's second line of real life Pokeballs. The Pocket Monsters Ball Collection Special 2. The new collection includes fastball, level ball, lower ball, etc. Cool. Probably gonna cost you like 80 bucks yeah uh it is merchandise related um lupin the third castle of caligrastro in theaters uh that's lupin cool. the third deserves a lot more love than it gets my uh, buddy the anime hero has really been like doing these intro videos to try and get people more into lupin the third because people do like it it was on toonami it has had doubts but i feel like it's, it's one of those back shows on toonami again currently oh yeah that they try to re-release new ones but i feel like it's one of those shows it's kind of like this the north star where people know about it some people watch it, but it, I feel like it should be bigger. 
It should be a lot bigger. It's, it's very good. Why, why do you think it's never been quite... It's always been kind of niche. I think 100% of it has to do with the animation. Honestly, though, when I, I watched like the, or the first series... It was good series, then. For, the, for like 1972 or whatever, it was pretty good animation. Yes, but where we are now, where everything's kind of integrating CGI... Berserk. <laughs> seamlessly. It's not... Into it and more frames per shot. I don't basically. even like that, some of that, the way that looks, though, to be honest. Well, there's a lot of newer things that are just gorgeous to look at. All right, well, okay, all right, well, let me. All right, well, and it's hard to get new fans into it because they're like, it's old and weird. And I, and I want to not to go off on that. It's just like a brief topic because that's one thing that's always kind of bugged me. And you can just tell me, maybe I'm old and old fashioned, like maybe I'm a snob, but I kind of like some of the older, grainier stuff. Like a lot of the older anime from the 80s and 90s. It's not digital. It doesn't look as flashy or as colorful, but the, the detail and animation, though, for a lot of it was pretty cool, and I, the variation of designs... There's a place for it. There's a grittiness, and, and also, I don't know if it's related, but... I you, think that Cowboy Bebop wouldn't work well in modern style of animation. It's not flashy. It looks good, but it's not the same level of high, high fast frame rate, super colorful stuff that's constantly out now. I think they worked Cowboy Bebop around that kind of gritty kind of feel. I mean, I guess it was still pretty polished for what it was. But it still used the kind of gritty effect to kind of give it the, the vintage kind of feel. <laughs> yes. Even true. with the movie that they did that came out after oh other things, they still used that gritty kind of It's a really good movie. Effect. No, uh, well, do you think that when it comes to animation in general, I feel like it's more with anime like maybe do people harp a little bit too much on it being like better quality because how far can you really push it because I think everything looks the same now like, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods had glorious animation uh, then you watch the first couple of episodes of Dragon Ball Z Super and they didn't give a shit uh, well they well that's that's because they did everything backwards there but that's that's what, the, I'm, what I'm telling you <laughs> is that when they try Things look gorgeous and really, really good, and the action seems seamless, and it, it flows really well, and it's easy for your eyes to, to catch on to. And then when they don't try, nothing's on model. Every in-between frame looks really, really janky. But, I mean, that's comparing two things that were made fairly close together in terms of time. I'm, I'm talking about something like, like original Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball versus Dragon Ball Super. Or, you know, some... Well, going by that, I personally... Prefer the animation style of Super. You do. I, I, well, I mean, it's the, hard to explain. The design's a little bit different too. Like it doesn't look exactly the same. I guess I like the. Uh, it looks more fluid. Yeah, how fluid it is. The leaner look to everything. Because mm -hmm. to be honest, I never fully believed that Goku should be able to move like that when he was nine. Tons of brick. <laughs> like I get why fit the dude in Fish of the North Star was going like that because that was his that was his deal. Mm -hmm. Everyone else was kind of slow, and he was the fast guy, and that was his, mm -hmm. his, that was his thing. thing. But like everywhere else, it's like you think it makes a better difference. Yeah. Well, it's a personal preference. It's definitely all down to personal preference. All right. Well, in any case, uh, Capsule Cagliostro is like the one that Miyazaki directed, so it's a little bit different. Lupin's got a lot of different interpretations, but I guess that's out now. So, in theaters. In theaters, so you know, check it out if it's not. Uh, tell me if you know any of this. Best and worst Pokemon movies of all time. Uh, the best Pokemon movie was probably Pokemon 2000 with Lugia. I think I've heard that a lot. Yeah. Uh, a Rose of Versailles chocolate snack collaboration. Let's fans kiss Oscar. You know... Who the fuck is Oscar? Okay. Oscar is the uh, main character of Rose of Versailles. She's kind of like pretending to be a man in that show. She's okay. kind of like a very early, um, you know, strong female character. It's like uh, it's actually based on a true story. But once again, um, they're they're creating this chocolate snack so you can uh, kiss her or bite into her. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's a whole whole other scroll down. Uh, yeah, a little bit more and oh yeah, that Death Note movie was great. Death Note movie was Death terrible. Netflix is We're going to make an entirely different video just on how the Death Note movie was bad. Oh, I'd love to hear that. Yeah. I, 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 have, I already have like ideas for it going through. 
<laughs> Netflix's live action Death Note film director deletes Twitter after harassment. Look, yeah, if you can do it. No, well, Go fuck well, away. Look, man, I mean, look, you can't. The, the, the director or the writer always gets the main brunt. There's a whole group of factors, probably. Okay. Yes. The writing was shit. The writing was, was pretty bad. It wasn't um, even a good movie. It wasn't. It was a terrible movie. Dynasty Warriors 9, because you need more of those. Yeah, they were fun. Wake up, wake up. Oh, yeah, Ray Zero. Seven version of Ray Zero's Rem. Uh, debut at number six, so you've got, I guess... Uh, don't worry about it. I need... It's, don't worry about it. I got it covered. Oh, you're on top of it already. I'm on top of it. Uh, Where are you there? Um, well, oh, live action film unlock Miss Winry, anime voice actress comments on the film probably saying that it's great because the actors always have to promote the film well here's the thing yeah, from, from each preview that I've seen it seems to be done competently with any sort of idea about what the show was supposed to be about Death Note what? <laughs> huh? what could you be complying there? <laughs> I, I didn't say anything what do you he just said he just said <laughs> no <laughs> when? when? you know what it didn't happen but I, you know just as a brief reminder you're right I'm really looking forward to that. That comes yeah. out in like a couple months, I think. Oh, I hope we can get a simulcast or something through Crunchyroll. Hopefully. That'd be great. That's going to be amazing. Um, I think, ooh, eight things you probably didn't know about. Yeah, I know about Hakusho and Hunter Hunter. Come on, guys. You know that. <laughs> NES Classic Addiction gets restocked in 2018. Okay, well, I didn't get the first one. I wanted to get that. I really, yeah. I really did. Yeah. I think it can't. And it's going to be having new games added on to it, so that'd be cool. Uh, Ooh, Final Fantasy XV sells 1 million physical copies in Japan alone. Good, because it's a great game that had an ending. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> had an ending. Yep. Uh, Alright, well, since we're going into like a couple days ago, I'll cut this off. And I'll say this is the end of the anime news reactions, because that was a while. But the one hour, one, one piece special... Sanji versus Luffy. Who's gonna win? Um, just throwing this out there. Sanji's the man. Uh, you're allowed to have your opinions. You don't like Sanji? You don't like Sanji? Sanji's best character is the best. The oh, best character in One Piece was Ace. And he's dead now, so I don't care. So you just, you just don't even do One Piece at all anymore? No, One Piece is still good. Do you still read the manga? Do you still up, up with it? Uh, I stopped maybe 50 chapters after the time skip. Oh, you didn't like the time skip? No, I did. It's just I ran out of time with all the other shit that I'm doing. Uh, One Piece takes devotion. Um, I admit to being... There are a thousand episodes of One Piece. If, I, if I'm doing my math correctly. It's hard to do One Piece. Uh, if you're going to get into it, read the manga, but... Um, it's It'd be a lot faster to read the manga. And yeah. then just jump to the last episode of the anime that came out. Or, or watch it at your leisure, but it, it is a... It it's is a, good. It's, no, I, I, it's, I do like One Piece. It takes dedication. It's a commitment. It is a long commitment. It's almost a lifestyle. All right. Uh, we'll move on, I guess, movies and TV and stuff here on Screen Rant. Um, oh, Thor spent Civil War hunting for Thanos. Well... It doesn't really surprise me. How did he know who Thanos was? Well, remember in Thor Ragnarok, he found that the weird stone so thing, then the vision thing. So wouldn't he have spent Civil War hunting for the Infinity Stones? Yes, I think that's what they're going for. Well, that's not your title. It says, th it says Thanos. Yeah, but he didn't see Thanos in his vision. <laughs> Maybe. I remember that vision. It was the Infinity Stones well, in well, the Infinity well, Gauntlet. From what I understand, they cut certain parts of that scene so we didn't get to see. That's why it was a random scene where he's spacing out in a cave and you're like, I don't know what's going on. He's like, oh. Look, if... No. Okay? There's my, there's my fucking answer there. No. Thor wasn't in Civil War because whatever team had Thor on it would win. And, and same with the Hulk. That's exactly. like the way they did it in the comic, too. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, perfect. Um, oh, um, I didn't actually see it yet, but it has the biggest horror movie opening ever, I guess in terms of box office. I think that's great. I, I think you said you thought the trailers... Looked the like, trailers look terrible. They look pretty generic. They'll float, too. That kid did not do a good job of making that scene scary at all. Well... The, the one or two I saw did look like they kind of cut it to make it look like it was a generic, like, jump scare horror slasher thing. But the little bit of acting from the clown, uh, from Pennywise, seems scary. The makeup seems scary. Oh, man. He, 
Right. He, well, he jiggery jammed at the camera. All right, well, Tavlin, have you read Florida Spooks? Have you read the book? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think they're conveying something. It, it looks scarier than the Tim Curry version. <laughs> the Tim Curry version wasn't scary, but Tim Curry did a good job. Yes. Um, but, yeah, apparently that's a, a good thing. I know it got a lot of good reviews. Uh, so that's that. Leonardo DiCaprio wants to play Stanley in a biopic. I guess young Stanley. Like, good for him. Starting. Good for Leonardo DiCaprio has an Oscar now. He, he can, can he do, do whatever he wants. He could do whatever he wanted to like twenty years ago. Yeah, but now he can stop doing Oscar bait. I just kind of miss the days when we were just kind of missing. Like, why don't does, Leo just never get to get that Oscar? Like the, the Academy. He slept him. in a dead bear. But is that really acting though? If he literally was out there in North Dakota freezing his ass off. Is that acting? It stopped being acting and he started being the character. He really got into the environment. Well, you know what? He is dedicated. He goes for... I, I love Leo. He's a great actor. He is. He goes hard. So if he played Stan Lee, I'd be down for it. Um, Flash is reborn and new season four promo. Oh, wow. The Flash is alive in The Flash. Well, you? well, if you know anything about the uh, comics, guys, um, Flash is like immortal because he literally can run away from death. He literally outran, runs death constantly. Um, let's see. Carrie Fisher's daughter auditioned for Rey in Star Wars 7. That really was important. I needed to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Jason Blum calls Glass a very different superhero movie. That's the... I guess the sequel to Split on Unbreakable. Uh, I'm looking forward to that because I really love Unbreakable and Split was pretty good. Unbreakable was okay. Split looked dumb as hell. It looked dumb, but I actually thought it was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, ben Affleck's Batman script is inspired by David Fincher's The Game. Um, that one better be in it. I'm going to click on the article now. Just, just, just to appease your Nightwing fandom. Uh, ben Affleck drawing this Nightwing and Batgirl need to be in the movie. Affleck uh, before his role, blah, blah, because Affleck's like leaving. What? Uh, this is just about how it's inspired by the game. Well, oh, wait. Uh, Deathstroke might be in it. Deathstroke was already announced to be in it. He showed, he tweeted a thing or put up on Instagram. Uh, working. Like, cast like Deathstroke a year ago. To be main villain, a future. Oh, no. Um, but they're unsure now because they, because I guess Ben Affleck left directing. And maybe acting, so it might not be. He might not be in it anymore. That movie's a mess. That that that. But he did a good job as Batman. But apparently, I guess he's having like a lot of conflict with with Warner Brothers and their universe because he left direction and then he left the acting, and it's like, and now it's going to be like possibly a prequel that might take place in the same, you no, know, an alternate universe, but with a different Batman. I heard a lot of different news about this one. <sighs> That movie started off as hopeful and is now getting worse every couple of seconds. Um, I don't know. It's just because they keep changing things, honestly. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I, I was I did like him as Batman. I know some people don't, but generally he's considered to be, like, the best thing about you know, Batman v Superman. I think he was the best Batman on film. Even more than, like, uh, Michael Keaton or, dare I say it, Adam West? Yeah. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Oh, no. I... Find the Keaton Batman movies enjoyable. Oh no! But I don't personally find them to be good. Why is that? It's not what I'm looking for in a Batman movie. What would you be looking for in a Batman movie? I guess closer to animated series Batman. That's always been my kind of favorite portrayal of the Bruce Wayne character. Probably the best one. Yeah, but. Something. Well, I, right, I guess right. they got. I guess in the original Batman movie, they got the closest to what we could possibly see. Yeah, at the time, it was very innovative. I guess for making Batman dark again, and it did help kind of inspire the Batman animated series to an extent. I, I mean, I, I'll admit, I kind of grew up with those. Those are like my first introductions to Batman. So maybe I'm a little biased. I think that Michael Keaton in the bat suit. Is the best live action Batman to me. I, I think Affleck's. I, I can understand that. The Bruce Wayne, I mean, he did do a different portrayal, and the thing about those movies is they are very Tim Burton y. You know, they're. I, th I guess that's my problem with them. They're a little campy in a way. Yeah. They, they don't really I don't think that it's going to be really weird, but Batman, if you're going to do Batman campy, just hire Adam West. Mm, I mean, it wasn't. 
It was still dark, but it was like it was I've seen the movie dark, and, I, and I under, can understand it. And I think I, it feels. I, like, I totally get it. And I un, he's the he's definitely really good oh. in the role, but as a whole, I don't really fully enjoy like the what's been put to screen for Batman for the most part. Even well, okay, well everybody loves the the. Dark Knight trilogy, and I think those movies are horrendous. They're a little overrated. Well, you you hate them? Yeah. Why? Like I, yeah, I, I, I find like them. them. I, I can I can view them as comedies. Like they're <laughs> they're fucking hilarious. Is it mostly because of what they did to Robin and the other one? No, it's mostly because of how bad it was just in general. That he didn't seem like Batman to me. He seemed like a rich guy that put on a suit to fight crime. Which is interesting, because that is kind of Batman. <laughs> yeah, but, you, but you're a fan of Batman, so you know that he's a little bit more than that. I, I never really got the sense he was a detective or that he was like larger than life, even though he's a guy. He just seemed like Christian Bale was a guy who wanted to be something like Batman. But it never, it never transferred that he fully was that guy. Partially, it's just because of that damn voice. Why are he's talking like this? Like, why do they, why do they think that was... <laughs> stuff like that. I have maybe one of the most controversial opinions on the planet. Oh, no. Heath Ledger did, ha- did a good job as the Joker. Oh, no. I do not like that Joker. You think he's just not Joker-like enough? He's not Joker. I, he's I, don't, I, I understood from like the first scene that he was supposed to be the Joker... But then, like... He does seem like a very different character than he typically is. But what do you think was different about it that didn't feel like Joker to you? Because that's like everyone's ideal Joker now. I didn't think he was having fun. He was too angry? He was... The Joker has fun with what he's doing. He's fucking insane. The plans that he does is so that he can enjoy the meaningless existence. Mm -hmm. And that Joker was angry and anti-establishment and, like... He had motive. He had an agenda, and I'm like, and he did have a plan. He joked he, that he didn't plan everything, but he was he, planned to a T. He had a plan, and then like, Joker was in the movie was the uh, was actually a marine who was damaged by shrapnel, and I'm like, he's a dude that fell into some acid and became insane. Like, fuck off. Wow. All right. That is that is controversial. I don't. Know, I like. I have some very controversial opinions about Batman. Well, you know, I mean, that could that could be another discussion, maybe. But uh, yeah, like, wow, I never knew you didn't really like that Joker or, or those movies or, wow. Yeah. Well, Mark Hamill's Joker still can't Mark, be touched. Mark Hamill is the best Joker. Is it partially because it's animated and that makes it closer to the comics for you? Because that's how I look at it. I like okay. Think... Well, just to give you an example, um, like because I really grew up reading a lot of comics and I kind of see it as sort of fantastical. Even with the Marvel movies, the, they're doing a really good job, and a lot of people like that. I still like something like Avengers Assemble, where it's still it's animated, it's a cartoon, still feels like a comic book. If it's too real, I don't know if I like it quite as much. I, don't, I, I don't feel know. like with Mark Hamill, that version of Joker, while he could still be serious and he could still make a plan, still was having fun and was fucking around... And, like, trying to enjoy whatever he was doing at whatever time, but then he could he could turn it on in a second. The Dark Knight's Joker was always just kind of... I'm insane. <laughs> man. Wow, the hate's really there. Yeah. Like, okay. There's so much hate, man. Oh, hate. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, we, we talked about this briefly. Last Guardians of the Galaxy. Who could it be? We thought it was Doctor Strange. Moving on. Who could it, who could it be? Is it Deadpool, Cable, or Doctor Strange? Or Man Thing? <laughs> well, man, the group has two groups now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, oh yes. J.J. Abrams is going to direct Star Wars 9. Because oh, he's the best one to direct. Because he's the best d- director from any Star Wars <laughs> movies. Because, as you see, the practical effects mixed with the CGI makes the best mm, feel of the movie. No matter, maybe the movie was literally episode 4, and episode 9 will literally be episode 6. But, you know, he's the best director. The best director. I thought you liked Force Awakens. I love Force Awakens. Because I love A New Hope. But you're admitting it's the same movie. It's the same fucking movie. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you're right. 
Um, down to the sand planet. Literally down to the sand planet. And then they blow up the... Honest trailers did a good job with that. And then they flew away in the Millennium Falcon, fleeing the villains from the sand planet. I mean, they didn't have as many lightsaber battles. Well, I guess the only that wasn't as good. Wait, Spoiler wait, 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 lightsaber battles are my favorite part of Star Wars, period. Wait, so you're telling me that... Wait, you're not saying that the original, the New Hope lightsaber fight was better, are you? No, I'm just saying that it existed. <laughs> it existed and it was different. I feel like the, the between original New Hope and now, it's just lightsabers like, themselves themselves, and like the meaning behind them has changed. It's just New Hope. Re- redo? <laughs> it's, a re- it's a New Hope reboot. It is. Um, Luke is now Yoda. Yeah. Oh, well, I thought they were going for more. Well, I guess Han was like Obi. Yeah. And then, spoilers. <laughs> he dies. To, oh, man, it's the same movie. It's um, the same movie. If you, didn't, if you didn't know, Han Solo was the one who turned on the lightsaber. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you gotta look at the internet. Okay. <laughs> the internet. You gotta look at the internet. Uh, you know, I still think... Uh, I still think Finn did a pretty good job with the lightsaber. They faked me out, like when I saw when I saw the trailers originally. Yeah. People are so raising Mary Sue, uh, or she fought a dude that was dying. Well, he wasn't. I, I think a badass force using Sith dude should you know be able to shrug off getting shot though. Did they spent the entire movie building up that one shot from a Wookiee bowcaster could kill a platoon of guys? And he took one and ran after them, and then got stabbed by a lightsaber, and then got caught by a lightsaber. Dude, you're you're never gonna convince me that he's an intimidating villain. I'm not saying that he's an intimidating villain. I'm saying that he's better than most people think he is. Okay, he's he's better than most people think. But I I mean, okay, I feel like he wasn't even really that crippled by it, though. That's what I was. Well, I mean, okay, yes, I'm I'm saying yeah, that's cool, but like. I mean, I, no, th- th- this, this is this is a different. This is it's doing Ray a disservice because what I'm trying to say is she did pretty good considering she's never used a lightsaber before. Yes, and the guy wasn't that injured, which is why I think building up the next battle won't mean as much. I'm gonna say that he was injured, but that, that this is a <laughs> this is, we could fight about this for hours. Okay, okay, well maybe another another time. We'll put it away. I'll, we'll wrap up this page soon. Um, Robotech live action movie. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I mean, Robotech fans, congratulations. I, I mean, the, the anime's back on Netflix, I think, so that's cool. Um, but I'm going to just end on this because I just think it's funny. Read it for me. Anna Kendrick to play Santa Claus's daughter in Disney's Nicole. Whatever that is. Is it Nicole because Claus? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know. Because fuck you. Actually, the article below, it's pretty good. iPhone 10, 5, <laughs> iPhone 8, difference between Apple's new phones. Uh, Why is this iPhone on... X v iPhone 8? Whatever. Which you want, wait, where's the iPhone 9? Apple reveals details of new iPhones, the iPhone 8, the iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone X, with new designs and updates. Why is this on screen, man? <laughs> Why does this have anything to do with movies? Because Apple owns the planet. Okay, I guess they do. You can watch them. But come on, guys. Apple owns the planet. Okay. Uh, if, I'm going to see if Cinema Blend has anything else. Uh, okay, with the director, we talked about that. Uh, I don't think this one had many good ones. Oh, yeah. Um, in Gotham, Bruce Wayne's finally getting the suit, apparently. It's not Bruce Wayne. Gotham's a terrible fucking show. It's not a good show. Uh, yeah, that's that. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you've been playing a lot of Destiny, too. I have been playing a lot of... I finished the story already. And you said, was it better? Yeah, it was a lot better. It they had characters. The characters they had meaning for being in the story. You interacted with them. It was a logical progression that a, a story that had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Oh. Unlike the original Destiny. Yeah, I tried to play it I, I, when it came out. I couldn't really get into it, to be honest. By the Taken King DLC, everything had kind of come full circle, and it made sense, and it had a story again, but like, the launch was abysmal. Um, I, I knew you said that we're actually doing this at kind of a weird time because tomorrow Nintendo's going to release like their slots for new games, I guess. Uh, they're having a Nintendo Direct, which is basically what they've started doing at E3. Is 
here's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Get excited. Here's release dates for what we're doing. Get excited. Is there anything you, you suspect you've heard about that might be uh, There's a new Pokemon. Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are coming out on November. Uh, they're probably going to do more details for Mario Odyssey. Uh, they might have an update for Metroid Prime 4. Ooh. Uh, literally all they had back at E3 was like a, a slide that said it existed. Yay! So like maybe the I like, I like rendering of a character. Woo! That you get to be like in a new sexy suit again? Um, that'll be the first. That'll be their first priority. No, what <laughs> they've been doing mostly is kind of like kind of backpedaling from other M mm-hmm. and uh, trying to like reestablish her as the badass bounty hunter that she was originally. That was supposed to be always one of the things I thought was coolest about her, because you know I like the sci-fi stuff. That's why mm-hmm. I like like Metroid's like my favorite of the Nintendo Nintendo lines, and I really always thought that it was cool that she was this badass character in the armor. And that she wasn't really identified by the gender. It's cool that she's like a hot chick, of course, but that's not... It doesn't matter because you identify her in the suit, you know? Samus was identifiable as a badass bounty hunter. First. And then, in a super special secret, barely anybody got the ending, it was a woman. And that, and nobody... It didn't matter no. that she was... I think that's the way that you do a strong protagonist, is the gender shouldn't matter. Don't draw attention to it. The, the, like, what they do and who they are as a person should never be tied to their gender. No, you're right. The actions are come first. I mean, yeah. I guess you could say that, like, in anything, really. Yeah. But, you know, you're right. And that's... I, I'm glad they're getting back into that. Um, Battlefront 2... Oh, yeah, that's coming out. Ooh. Yeah, the Jurassic Park game looked pretty cool, actually. It looked kind of cool. It was a Jurassic World. I, I don't know. I feel like there were some good ones, but... God, more iPhone news. I guess. I guess. Um, people like the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Newsflash: Apple is popular. Oh yeah, GTA like, Online. Um, where you get to like raid. Like, what do you? What the fuck? GTA Online still a thing? I, I didn't even know. Like, I never played it. Um, I don't care about Grand Theft Auto at all. Um. Well, in that case, I'll go to Comic Vine, and that'll be the end of the news section, <laughs> which has been very focused, as I'm sure you can tell. Yeah. And uh, since my internet's real, not, oh, okay, never mind. Tom King discusses new Mister Miracle book. I like Mister Miracle. Mister Miracle was a good character. It was cool. He got that one episode of Justice League. Um, mm-hmm. Big Bar is cool. Oh yeah, I wanted to talk to you a bit about this. DC's new Nightwing explores uh, powerless heroes. Like I guess basically, um, all the other characters will have superpowers. Will lose them, and Nightwing's just going to be like the main hero available to fight. Well, it's because like he. Okay, where's Batman? Well, yeah. uh, Nightwing's my favorite comic book character. Just getting this out of the way. Where's Batman? Well, okay, DC's upcoming miniseries Nightwing The New Order completely changes the dynamic of the comic book universe. Always does. Majority of heroes and villains alike had their powers stripped from them, and the man leading the charge while working with the government to hunt down the remaining metahumans is Dick Grayson, also known as Nightwing. So does that make him the villain? He's a bad guy. They're doing a, the uh, superhero registration act, but for DC, and he's the bad guy going after everybody who has superpowers. Fuck you! <laughs> no, no, eat a, eat the biggest bag of dicks. Go away. Okay, so you're not a fan. I'll, I'll read up about it later, but fuck that noise. Um. If... <laughs> <sighs> okay, Spider Man got me flustered. Spider Man Homecoming. Who is the Vulture? Watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, who is Ar- who is Ares? Who is who is Wonder Woman? I'm going to read this article. Who, before you go and see the newest DC film, find out the origins of this Golden Age character. Well, basically, what they're doing is comic books are being marketed to a new audience now, mm-hmm. the casual moviegoer. True. And while they are being marketed as, look at this character. It, isn't it great that this character is getting their own movie? Everyone else is like, the fuck is that, though? And hardcore comic book fans are like, great, it's about damn time. And everyone else is like, it's about time for what? Mm. So you think it's good they're promoting the origins. But I thought you'd get the sense of that in the movie. So yeah. you could just go read comics. Um, oh, Bat- This was done in one of the worst comic books I've read in a very long time. Yeah, Batman writer discusses the Dark Knight's proposal to Catwoman. Wait. Is this that this is suicide one? Yeah. Okay. And the issue after that, Batman invites the Joker and the Riddler to Wayne Manor. Why? To have a discussion. 
Well, I my buddy Troll actually let me borrow this. He said it was like one of the worst things he's read in a while too. Um, but is it is it bad because of the the Batman Catwoman thing or is no it- that is fine. Like they they do it in a really cool way and it makes sense if you follow the characters. I mean, like there were two people potentially in the universe that Batman would ever probably get married to. Yeah, yeah, potentially. One yeah. of them, I guess, he was uh, super with. That's a whole other discussion. But, um... But, like... Aw, marry me. Uh, if you want context behind that, I can tell you later. But, like, th- there's this plot going on, the, the war of jokes and riddles, where <laughs> the Joker and the Riddler were having a war that could destroy Gotham and Batman was powerless to stop them so in order to call a truce he called both of them to to Wayne, to Wayne Manor because obviously the Joker and the Riddler already know that Batman is Bruce Wayne obviously right um not in most versions of the story no I mean uh, yeah, you it know. seems like a risky move but if he's really trying to does he do it as Bruce Wayne or as Batman as Batman and he's still saying Bruce Wayne's just like, we're going to meet no. the actual ground. No. no. Come over to my house. Why did he do that? Because it's written by a fucking moron. Oh, that's rough. Um, I'm sorry. That was a little hard. Uh, oh, my goodness. I'm. I'm no. Fun. I have very controversial opinions about Batman. Yeah, well, as you stated. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, we've been podcasting for almost an hour. Do you want to do the show in discussion, or do you want to save it for another time? Uh, I feel like the Shonen discussion will take another hour. <laughs> okay. Honestly. Well, that'll probably be something we get to. Um, but yeah, uh, this was basically... Um, I mean, we're, we're still kind of working on the format, but... If Next you, week it could be something completely different. Who knows? We might, we might just have like a couple of main discussions and not talk about news at all. But I think it was pretty cool. Tell us what you think. Yeah, just just let us know about ideas and the stuff you you know think about what we talked about and... I guess, you know, I'm Merlin and Tiefling will be here, hopefully. And we're going to try and get some other people. You might have seen some familiar faces in here, too. So it'll be uh, even more chaotic then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm going to sign off. Uh, say goodbye, good sir. And with that, uh, stay magical.